Hi everyone, it's Evangeline here at eTrailer and today we'll be taking a look at our Swagman Schnook 2 bike platform rack right here on our 2015 Toyota 4Runner. So the Swagman Schnook really shines when you have an inch and a quarter hitch but you need something that's a little extra heavy duty to carry your bikes. Now in our case on the 4Runner we have a 2 inch hitch so that feature is not as important but it's still a great heavy duty bike rack that also allows you to tilt it away. Something that's better than the Swagman E-Spec which has more weight capacity but not that tilt. So let's take a look at that tilting feature. So we have this lever right over here. You're going to lift that lever up and then just drop this down. You'll want to do that if you want to access your hatch. While you can lower the windows here on your Forerunner, what if you want to open your door all the way up? As you can see, we have a pretty good amount of clearance between our door and our pedals and our handlebars, allowing us to open that door, grab whatever we need, whether it's our helmets, our bags, our coolers, all without having to take our bikes off. To bring it back into position, you just push this up and it snaps into place. This does have a weight capacity of 45 pounds per bike, which is a little bit more than your traditional bike rack. So if you do have your heavier bikes though, you might have to lift them up into place and exert a little bit more strength. So the way our bike is mounted to this bike rack is we have a frame hook, which secures our bike by, well, the frame. Now the way Swagman does this though is that that frame hook is actually mainly just for support. What's really holding your bike down is or are the wheel straps. So notice how our wheel straps go around our front and our rear wheels and they ratchet down to secure it. When you want to take your bike off, that's also where you start. You just press that lever, lift that strap up. And a nice thing about Swagman is you can just let that swing down and away and it doesn't get caught up in your spokes. Now you're going to want to hold on to the bike as you go to this next step, which is to release the frame mount. Our frame mounts have a lock on them, so if you have them unlocked, you're then able to press this button and lift that hook up. What you can do is you have two options here. Ideally, you just tilt this bike over to the side and then maneuver it around the mast. You can also just lower the mast. Now, we're not going to lower that mast all the way because on our Forerunner, we actually have a really good clearance in the back, which allows us to tilt this away without worrying about this hitting our windows and then lift it off our bike rack. Now that our bike is off, we can take a closer look at the bike rack itself. So we have these metal wheel cradles, as well as these wheel straps. The maximum tire width we can accommodate here is up to three inches. Now you can get an adapter if you do have fat bikes. So make sure you know your own tires width. And whenever you have any hitch accessory on your 4Runner, there's gonna be some length added to it. So we'll take some measurements to see exactly how much. Measuring from our bumper to the furthest point, it's gonna sit at 27 and a half inches which is actually on the compact and smaller side when it comes to two bike platform racks on your forerunner whenever you're backing into your garage or parking into a tight spot you kind of need to know what length is added to the back of it especially since you have a larger vehicle like the forerunner this might be a good option for you if you have a smaller garage and really need the most compact bike rack you can get now taking a look at ground clearance, it's going to be measured right over here where the tray is. Ground clearance of 25 and a half inches. By the shank, it's a ground clearance of 18 and a half inches. That's a lot of ground clearance. Whenever you're going up steep inclines like driveways or hills, sometimes you want to be mindful that you're not hitting the ground in the back. Here on our Forerunner, not going to be an issue. And if you want to open up your hatch, you're going to have to lower this mass. To do so, you have a lever right over here. You're going to want to pull on the lever that says pull and make sure to get it all the way up. That way you can lower this mast and now access your hatch with your bikes off. And for a more compact position, you can fold this tray up. So lift this other larger lever and then fold your schnook up and we'll take some measurements with it in this position. Closest point is going to be from our bumper to where this mast is, and it's about four and three quarter inches of clearance. Plenty clearance there. Next measurement is length added with it folded up. That's gonna be from our bumper to the end of the shank. 
and that sits at 18 inches. Big difference compared to when our bike rack was folded down. Definitely want it in this position when you're not planning on taking your bikes out, but you also don't want to take your bike rack off because it's on the heavier side. Now with this folded up, let's talk about how this fits behind your 4Runner. This is a very compact bike rack, so you can see how our rear window, our taillights, our backup camera, and even our license plate are fully visible. That's actually pretty rare for bike racks on your 4Runner. I've tried a lot of platform racks and they usually come up right over where the e-trailer license plate is or even where your window is. So that's nice to see if you do want to stay safe and legal on the road, this might be one of your best options. The bike rack itself has an inch and a quarter shank with a two inch hitch adapter. So that pops right into your two inch hitch receiver on your Swagman. You also have a hitch pin bolt or sorry, an anti rattle bolt and this lock. So this lock goes right into your hitch pin and you can also put the cable lock for your Swagman bike rack there because that's going to be the way you tighten down or lock down your bikes and your bike rack. Now let's take a look at a shake test. As we shake our bike rack in the hitch, notice how I'm really just moving the car at this point, showing how secure that fit is between the bike rack and our hitch receiver. Even though we have a hitch adapter sleeve on the bike rack, you can see that that securement is secure. Here on our test course, we'll start by going through the slalom. This is going to show us the side-to-side -side action, which simulates turning corners or evasive maneuvers. Once we get to the alternating speed bumps, we'll see the twisting action. This will simulate hitting a curb or a pothole or driving over uneven pavement. Now lastly, we're going over some full speed bumps and we can see here the up and down action and this will just be like driving in and out of a parking lot, garage, or driveway. My final thoughts about this bike rack is while it doesn't have as much weight capacity as let's say the Swagman E-Spec, and it also has not as much of an ease of use as compared to let's say the Kuat Transfer, what it does do really well is be compact. So if you're in an area that requires that your license plate be visible at all times and you really want to make sure that your backup camera is not covered, but you also want the perks of having a good, strong, sturdy platform rack, this might be a really good option for you. If you want ease of use, check out, let's say, the Kuwait Sherpa, Kuwait Transfer. If you want more weight capacity, maybe check out the Swagman E-Spec or the Swagman Current. But all in all, this right here was a look at our Swagman Schnook 2-bike platform rack on our 2015 Toyota 4Runner.